Hello everyone. In this video, I will explain about HMP shunt pathway. HMP shunt means hexose monophosphate shunt. Hexose monophosphates are glucose 6-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate. In this pathway, these two hexose monophosphates are formed in an alternate bypass way. Shunt means bypass. Hence, it is known as HMP shunt pathway. It is also known as pentose phosphate pathway. In this pathway, pentose phosphates like ribose 5-phosphate, ribulose 5-phosphate are formed. Hence, it is also known as pentose phosphate pathway. Another name is also there known as phosphogluconate pathway. Glucose 6-phosphate is converted to phosphogluconate, hence it is known as phosphogluconate pathway. Now this pathway is very important for rapidly dividing cells and cells which are undergoing biosynthesis of fatty acids, cholesterol, nucleotides and neurotransmitters. For all these things, this pathway is very important. Now let us understand the pathway. The pathway has got two phases. Phase 1 is irreversible oxidative phase. Phase 2 is reversible non-oxidative phase. Now understand this one. Phase 1 irreversible means all the reactions are irreversible, one-way reactions and it is oxidative pathway for glucose. Glucose is converted to phosphogluconate and finally it results in the formation of ribulose 5-phosphate. In this process, glucose is dehydrogenated and decarboxylated and it forms NADPH H+. This is irreversible oxidative phase. The important thing is the formation of NADPH. See, NADPH is required for reductive biosynthetic pathways. As I told you, cells which are undergoing biosynthesis of fatty acids, cholesterol, nucleotides, neurotransmitters, all the biosynthesis they need NADPH and it is formed in this pathway. Second phase, non-oxidative reversible pathway. See, the ribulose 5-phosphate is isomerized to ribose 5-phosphate. Ribose 5-phosphate is required for the formation of nucleotides or ribose 5-phosphate is again converted back to ribulose and then to fructose 6-phosphate and glycerol 3-phosphate. If you remember fructose 6-phosphate and glycerol 3-phosphate, these two are glycolytic intermediates. Hence, they can get back to glucose 6-phosphate. So, this pathway is reversible and it happens with the help of transaldolase and transcatalase enzymes. So, transaldolase, transcatalase are intermediate enzymes between glycolysis and hexose monophosphate shunt because from ribose 5 phosphate it can, it can again form fructose 6 phosphate and glycerol 3 phosphate. Now, another important thing NADPH is very much required for detoxification of the cells. Understand this one. See, uh, in, in certain cases, in, by using of certain drugs or due to oxidative stress, human body may form reactive oxygen species. They are very dangerous. They are neutralized with the help of reduced glutathione. So, reduced glutathione converts this reactive oxygen species to unharmful reduced products. And then glutathione is converted into oxidized form. So, in order to detoxify, again glutathione should be converted to reduced form. And that reduced form conversion happens with the help of NADPH. If NADPH is not there, glutathione will not be reduced. If it is not reduced, detoxification is not possible. This is the importance. Like trimarquin, fava beans, sulfonamides also may form reactive oxygen species. All of them get detoxified with the help of glutathione, reduced glutathione. And reduced glutathione is formed with the help of NADPH. So this is the significance of this pathway. And the important one, conversion of glucose to 6-phosphogluconate happens with the help of an enzyme, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, G6PD. If anyone has got deficiency of this enzyme, cell may undergo breakdown, especially red blood cell. It results in hemolysis because red blood cell has got highest formation of reactive oxygen species. So this is the significance of this pathway. See you again.